We are back. And when I mean back, we are back, 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 right? Back. Like triple back. <laughs> triple back. <laughs> <laughs> triple back because we shooting this pot again. Oh, yeah. Technical difficulties, but it's all good because my bro's here. You know what I'm saying? So we running it back. Yeah, we out here. And um, we back with another episode of Connected Podcast. I'm your host, John Reels. Yep. My big bro, my guest, my yeah. brother. You know? My business partner, yeah, my, yeah. my brethren. You know what I mean? All that. All that. Don. Don. Don yo, what's up, bro? Appreciate you being yo, here. Yo, thanks again, for having bro. me again. <laughs> 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 thanks that's, for having me again. That's when you know it's love, though. When yeah, you could tell somebody, yo, we got to do that again. Yeah, listen, you know man. I mean? we, and, you know, <laughs> crazy part is that we own the place. So yeah. <laughs> So it's all good. Yeah, yeah. We own the place, so whatever you want to do, my boy. Word. Yeah, man. When, when you're able to tell somebody, yo, we got to do it again, and nah. they, they go with that. Nah, man. for sure. But my man, yeah. let's get into it, man. Let's yeah. get into it. So, yes. We're here, 2024. 2024, man. Feeling good. Feeling great. It's, it had an interesting start. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? A, tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, had an interesting start. But, um, you know, we talk a lot, and uh, we're very spiritual guys, and it's starting to it's starting to shape itself. I think sometimes, if it started smooth, like it would kind of get rocky down the line. I think it got rocky early, so that we can kind of like know what our bearings is going forward. So, you know, I mean, if it sounds crazy, like I think the reason why it started the way it started was because it was preparing us for the ease that's coming. Facts, yeah. facts, facts. Hills and valleys, hills and valleys. Facts. But getting back to, or not getting back to, but before we get into 2024, let's yeah, re yeah. Re rewind, rewind yeah. the tape. Okay. So, you're Jamaican. I'm definitely boop, Jamaican. Boop, boop. <laughs> I'm definitely ja <laughs> My name is Donovan, definitely Donovan, Jamaican. <laughs> Don Donovan. Donovan, you know? Word. Word. So, so, growing up, Jamaican household. Yeah. Was your family into entrepreneurship? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. Um, my father more so than okay. anybody else. Okay. Um, I that's where I I was watching him. Okay. Um, he he was a, a street pharmacist. Okay. And I adapted some of that charismatic lingo at watching him. Yeah. So entrepreneurship, yeah, I, but, but I saw it from him more so. But was that, because for me, I didn't have any entrepreneurs mm -hmm. around me in my family. I, I actually didn't even know what entrepreneurship was. Okay. I, so I I wasn't familiar with it until much later on in my life. Mm -hmm. But was your, outside of your dad and his, were, were you, and his background, mm -hmm. was anybody else in your family in the realms of it was or is everybody entrenched in the yeah, corporate yeah everybody was entrenched in the corporate i had uncle that was in the in the army okay uh, you know i had you know my my grandmother at the time she was a nurse my aunt worked for actually she helped start golden cross oh word yeah so she oh, knew yeah. the owner of golden cross like so the first one that was in the bronx she was the one that helped put it together and all that good stuff so i didn't know what the word was either okay. like entrepreneur but i i kind of saw certain things and I'm like okay you know as a kid you, you go in places you're not really knowing what's going on and then as you get older you start to understand being around it you start like, picking up traits word yeah. so so coming out of coming out of school mm -hmm. was that on your radar yet or was that like I I'm still or I'm coming out of school I'm starting my life my mm -hmm. adult life mm -hmm. and I'm getting into what what career yo, path? So, yo, so even before then, like even so, I left the Bronx. I'm gonna go back. I left the Bronx and went to Long Island. Okay, shell shock. There's no sidewalks, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I was just like, where y'all got us coming to live? And going to Long Island is definitely. What, what age was that? Uh, I want to say 16. Okay. Down there. And um, but shell shock, bro. Like, yeah, complete shell shock. But um, but I did see an opportunity when it snowed, okay. So I started like a snow a, a snow removal business, just going. It was me first, and then the kids in the neighborhood they just stayed inside. I got cool with like two of them, and was like, "Yo, listen, you want to go make some money?" Mm. And he's like, "Yo, why not?" 
and I was going there to go shovel snow. At this time, when we were younger, we were getting feats of snow. The birth of the <laughs> doja. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got we were getting feats. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. this inches of snow we get yeah. now. We got three, four, you know, feet of snow. Like so, I was out there trying to hustle that, and okay. you know, understanding what it was. And uh, my father at the time he owned uh, stationery stores, so I used to go in the Harlem with him while he was doing his thing. And like giving out candy, you know. Remember back in the day, the sour powers. Yeah, so yeah, I used to, yeah, yeah. I, used, I was the one when the kids come in, I would weigh, have to weigh them, yeah. and give them the bag, and then go from there. He brought it back, man. The yeah, dude, the dude in my hood, he wasn't weighing nothing. He was counting them shits one at a time. Was like, <laughs> yeah, what? Like, Cuanto? Twenty? Yeah, 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 twenty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, I remember that shit. Them. That shit came with a little, little white back, tweezer. Yeah, white tweezer <laughs> in the brown bag. <laughs> yeah, so I was. So we did that, but um, fast forwarding after school. Um, bro, I didn't know what I wanted to do career wise. I just knew that I didn't I wasn't gonna work for somebody. And if I had to, I would. Um so I did like odds and end jobs and I was like, yo, something else gotta give. Like so coming out of school, you know, I thought a bright idea, a buddy, you know, a buddy, it was his idea first and then said, yo, we should open a clothing store. Mm. And that's exactly what we did. And okay. from there, being a young guy with a clothing store. I was just like, okay, what's next? Like, that was even more so of a self shell shot because it's like now it's all on me and on a team aspect, I should say, about so, paying you know rent outside of what I'm doing now. So when I was younger. So when you say clothing store, was that like, like your own clothing, your own line, or was that like? Nah, it was a, it was vendors. We had to okay. get. So that's another process in itself. Yeah, I had to learn how to I'm go saying. get vendors, yeah. go into these like trade shows. Bro, I was going to these things in New York City, not knowing what the heck we were doing. I just knew what they wore around where I was living at the time, and we were just buying those things. I'm like, okay. you know what? We might as well just, you know, get the people what they want. And it was called Flavor Fashions. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was spelled, you know, uh, F L A V A. So Flavor Fashions. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the Jamaican it, flavor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> but it was definitely cool to kind of like, um, to kind of like see business from that side. But in the meantime, it, it's, you know, some, you know, you still not fulfilled. Mm. Um, so I just thought like, you know, I, I should be doing other things that I was young. And, you know, I, I, I guess I was on the money trail. So I was just trying to figure it out, man. And then, you know, ended up getting like a job working with people with disabilities. Wait, wow. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> before that, before, before the job uh -huh. with the disabilities, mm -hmm. cause, cause, the, the, this is the this is the pod where you hear about the real <laughs> ups and downs oh, and, yeah. and, and lefts and rights and struggles no, of entrepreneurship. Sure. Yeah. So you're in the clothing store. Yeah. And you had an interesting situation happen to you at the clothing store. Yeah. What, what? So yo, so um we uh somebody came and did a mural. At the time it was like 9-11, so we I wanted something on the wall. And at the time, the guy knew, um, the person that was there, knew that the alarm system wasn't working. Mm. So, and in the store, the um, crazy part about it is the jeweler, he was getting kicked out. So we put him in our spot, because our spot was big enough. So we, put, we brought Jamaica Avenue to like, this location. Got so it. we had a Got jeweler it. in there, we had our clothes, so one-stop shop. Bro, but the guy that was there doing the wall he knew what was going on. Mm. <laughs> the night before, after he found out, they drove a car through the back wall. Yeah. And uh, so was it my... the same wall with the mural? <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> it was the back they wall. They did the, you double in the, dirty in the back, if they back. Did so, that. I mean, so it wasn't, I think this was um the store was it was a big store, it was like 4,500 square foot, bro. Okay. It's a pretty big store. Yeah. So we had a really big like storage area. And um yeah, man, dudes drove a car, a, a daggone car through the back wall. My, my partner, he was opening up. It was his turn to open up. He opened up the the shutters. He said, nah. And he put it back down. <laughs> he calls me like, yo, get here now. I'm like, what's up? He said, get here now. Bro, I got there. The floor was cleaned out, bro. Damn. The floor, they they took out. They, they, um, the jeweler actually had put some, the, the expensive stuff away in his safe. So they couldn't break into the safe. Because you know the jewels have them crazy big safes. 
but they had he had a lot of like G-Shock watches. They broke the glass, took all the G-Shock watches. Damn. And the crazy part about this is I think that night we had made, the night before we had made like five grand and they didn't touch it. They touched only everything on the floor and that. And bro, but it was it was more so like devastating as like, man, here we are trying to do something positive and then this happens. So it, that that happens, right? Yeah. But and and you have the devastation of losing the product, yep. the damage to the store. Oh man. But also it's like your first opportunity in learning like like what it is yes. as an entrepreneur, right? Because it, it's not just on the surface level, you mm -hmm. know, the entrepreneur that doesn't really understand or the non-entrepreneur that For doesn't sure. understand business yep. and, and they see the surface level of, oh, the product is gone or the damage to the store. Crazy. But <laughs> but the behind the scenes of mm -hmm. the cost. The cost. You know. Yo, and, and the fact that we had insurance, right? You know, you think some young guys that will just be blindly going, not doing anything. Thank God we had insurance. Okay. Um, so we ended up filing a claim. And even that, though, was a process. Yeah. You're talking about, you know, uh, a black guy, Jamaican, and a Dominican, you know. Yeah, it sounds like a scam. <laughs> yeah. Telling them somebody that somebody drove through the wall. Mind mm -hmm. you, there was we were like, yo, there was no reason for us to break into our own stuff. We can show you bank receipts. bank. We could show you guys. We were making money. Yeah. Like, so it didn't even. So the fact that we were making money and we had no issues paying our rent, everything was legit. Yeah. So when we showed that, we thought that was like, because they asked for those. I don't know if yeah. that was a thing back then, but they asked to see like um, our bank statements to see if like we were making money. I don't know if they did that with everybody, but I know they did that with us. I mean, I think I think back. I was just having this conversation with somebody the other day mm -hmm. um, with you know with my accident that I just had. Mm -hmm. That I remember back then growing up, everybody was looking for an insurance scam for sure. Everything like yep. like our people in my hood would like want to like throw themselves in front, in front of a, of a car, car and like yeah. hope that they only broke a couple bones. Yo, I, I know <laughs> people that had this, this insurance scam that something was underneath the car if it scratched a certain type of way, they 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 um they deem it a um like totaled a total out. Total loss. Yeah, bro. I wow. bro, I know, you know, them schemes is all yeah, over the place, and yeah. I, so, I was mad shook. I don't wanna, because because those th schemes are like different type of crime. Yeah, yeah. So that's Word. why you know that's why I could imagine if they saw, you know, you. You two young yeah. minority dudes running a business, and now all of a sudden you're you filing a claim. Yeah, they they drove a car through our. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, so we had a police. Crazy. We had a police report. We had all that. And the crazy part about this is the cops. Um, you know, at the time, they were like, "Yo, the guys that broke into your spot are not too far from here." Wow. Yeah. So he was just like, you know, he was just like, "Listen, just I'm just letting you guys." Because he was the cop. Actually, he was proud of us. At first he he um, at first he came in and didn't know what was going on. Like yo, you, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. So it, at first I thought it was like some like we probably selling some stuff out of there. But when he saw that the business was legit, they used they come around you know on, on a beat. It wasn't even a beat. It was like it was a shopping center. But they come around just to, and he would just come out and just kick it with us, just talking. And all of a sudden, you know, he we developed this relationship. Yeah. And then when he found out that they were selling the clothes up there, he was like, yo, listen, you know, I was like. Yeah, I know. And it's, he told us exactly where it was at. And, you know, I had to pull up. Me and, you know, my partner pulled up over there for a little bit. And, you know, he gave us 20 minutes. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the, the good old days of neighborhood policing. Yeah. <laughs> gave us 20 minutes. Um, I was, because I was highly offended because of the person that did it. Yeah. And um, I'm like, yo, bro, I've known you for a little bit. And we were paying you for your services. It wasn't like he was coming to do it for free. Yeah. And the fact that you set this thing up really, you know, it 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 that was my, my first lesson from a business standpoint of deception. Mm. Crazy, bro. It yeah. was it was a rude awakening for me. Yeah, you always gotta be prepared. I tell people like, you know, plan for the worst. For sure. If it don't happen, great. Great. <laughs> but yeah. if it does, you're prepared, prepared. for it. And I, I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't we weren't prepared for it. Mm. Cause it was all it was raw emotion. Cause it was yeah. almost like Yo, you did something to me that devastated. This is something that it took us months to get together. The money, the this, the that. And in the blink of an eye, it was gone. It was gone. Yeah. Damn. So RIP to the to flavor <laughs> fashions. Flavor, flavor fashions. So so was that an immediate 
shut down at that point, or was yeah, it, it was an immediate shutdown because you know my partner and I had differences of what we wanted to do after going forward, and I really was getting thrown into this music space. Okay, so um, at that time, I'm like, yo, I'm paying. We're paying for studio time. At the time, I had, I had, I was working for an um, uh, independent label at the time. The guy that was is actually my mentor to this day. Um, his name is Charles, and uh, and he had a company called Forever Platinum. And we were going to the studio. We had a, a slew of artists, and I was the one that essentially got all the artists together. Mm. He was funding it all, and I okay. take trips all over with these guys, hand to hand CDs, doing all these things, and um, that kind of like I I got involved. And I was like, you know what, this is something I might want to do. Um, then I started seeing like the cash monies and all these people doing their thing, and I'm like, wait yeah. a minute, you know, if not just Master P was one, probably No Limit was probably one of the biggest, because we were seeing him in the source all the time. Yeah, with like a whole page of like 17 artists just dropping music. So I want to get back to that, mm -hmm. but you said something a minute ago that I thought was was clutch, that you said you and your partner had differences. Yeah, and you know, being where you are today in 2024, mm -hmm. that you've been in several entrepreneurial mm -hmm. um, s endeavors, so to speak. Mm -hmm. How important would you say in the entrepreneurial space, especially in a partnership, mm -hmm. um, is it that you have those conversations? Because I, I tell people all the time, especially like in the consulting that I do, I tell people like, have you and your partner discussed X? For sure. Because it's like we always discuss the dream Dreams. and the vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't discuss what if this happens or yeah. what if I don't like you no more? For sure. How are we dividing this? So, so the crazy part of it is the, my partner at the time was one of my it was my best friend's older brother. Okay. Um, and we were real cool. So the thing is though, we we parted ways, it was it was a it was an even split. Yeah. Um, and and what we did have, we just had a conversation on what we want to do. Um and he had a different vision than what I had, um, and I, at the time, I think because I, I think I was violated because I was I felt violated. I didn't want to be in the in the in the um, business of selling clothes. Okay, in a like a brick and mortar. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm not doing this because it, it felt. I felt. I think at that time I was more in my feelings than anything else. Looking back at it now, and it was probably the wrong choice because I was in my feelings. Yeah, but I, that's where I was at. I kind of led with that, like, yo, I feel violated, and I don't want, and I didn't want to take it out on him. Cause you know we, as far as when it comes to the alarm, we knew what we were supposed to be doing, and it wasn't fixed. And you know you don't want to start pointing fingers at who did what. I did this, you did that, and I was like, you know what? Let's just part ways. And you know we were cool. It, it wasn't like we parted ways and we didn't talk. Nah, it was my best friend's brother. We were all we were all cool. We all still hung out, you know. But as time goes, you kind of like start to find your own, and then everybody start going their ways. But you know, we definitely had that conversation, and it was a tough conversation to have, but it was nevertheless a good conversation. Yeah, it, it's it's important to have it off rip mm -hmm. from you know from from the inception of your business idea. Yep. Like, all right, cool. We both want to do X. So, what happens if A, B, and C, C happens? happens. Yep. And 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 always having the paperwork in place. Yep. You know, for the most uncomfortable situations. You know, because at least you know that. You know, you cross that bridge, anything changes. We've already discussed this, and sure. we have it ironed out. So that's dope. So you you step away from the clothing, mm -hmm. and now you 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 insert music life. Yeah, that's a big time block of your life. Yeah, right? yeah, insert music life. And music life was definitely fun. Understanding the process of what, because I was still learning business. Mm. So the music business was. Um, what I was learning. I, I, I understand having talent, but also understanding what to do with that talent and understanding how to market that talent. Like the, I, 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 I came to find out that the music was 10% of it. Okay. And knowing that, okay, this is 10% is the music. The rest of it is the business. Yeah. And that's pretty much what it was. Like we, we started having these, um, these meetings about what makes us sets us apart. And we used to just be, dry. we used to go down south all the time just to, one go to like Black Bikers Week. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody. I'm like that's just like showing my age, but <laughs> Black, Black Bikers Week. You go to you know what I mean. You go to Daytona, like you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. We, you know, um, I can't not freak Nick out because that was before my time. <laughs> Yo. But, but no, but like those type of like yeah, festivals. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we'll go down there with an Astro van, 
crazy part about this is we'll rent an Astro van and get <laughs> and get decals put on the windows and just drive down there and just pedal the CDs. But decals of what? Of your uh, company? Of, of his company, because okay. I was the president of the company. Okay. And um, decals of the CDs, man. So you have you'll have uh two S550 bands, one black, one white, and and then an Astro van with the stuff wrapped right, right around it. So now we put, and then we have a trailer with another truck with bikes on it. Mm. So we look like we were riding around and getting it. Yeah, yeah. So when we went down to these places, we were, you know, hand in hand in CDs. And, you know, I was always loving being in the midst of the people. So it didn't matter to me where we went. Being being that that you experienced that mm-hmm. and and you also have experience with music artists mm-hmm. today, mm-hmm. do you feel like that is a huge disconnect from the artist and their audience or their fan base? Because no. I remember, yeah, because I remember back then, like the mixtapes, you know, yep. you, you would see your local rapper doing hand-to-hands, dropping off CDs, That's whatever. It. Now it's like... Let me drop it on the line and you're good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for, for at that time... That was a big thing for us, right? Nobody knew who we were. Um, we were pushing. It was almost like a Wu Tang type situation, with focus on certain artists. Um, we had an in-house producer, and yo, bro, we were selling CDs. Like we were selling them. You know, we, we were, you, you talking about five dollars, four dollars, ten dollars? Like we're out in you know Forty Second hustling, but we're hustling state to state. And the, the crazy part about that is, is that we had these um, lime green CDs. Mm. So on the back of the CD was lime green. So it wouldn't look like everybody else's. Okay. So and we made sure that when we, you know, it was a clear CD, so you can see it. Mm. So you would hear you would hear people go, "Yo, that green CD is fire!" Mm. Like so, it was from a marketing standpoint. Yeah. We were like, "Yeah, we understood that." And um, we, you know, let's say we'll go down there with five hundred CDs and we'll come back with nothing, but we made money. And then you know, obviously, you had some you gave away and then some you sold. But yeah. the best part about this is that we know that we we could sell our music. Yeah. Word. No, nah, that's dope. So that's was that would you say like your your gateway to getting into music, that experience or that I mean, partnership? That, yeah, that, that experience gave me a um an opportunity to see how it feels to be like a president. Cause I was of a company. Mm. Um and cause everything was left on me. So he gave me a budget. I had to stick between the budget. And you know, clearly he was getting his money a certain type of way. So he, he and he was super smart. This dude had four, four to like five houses. He was already setting his life up, and um, and he was older. So I was getting game from him on that way, and then also understanding what I needed to do as a as a head of a, of a company. And um, he would give me a certain budget for the month or three months, and I would have to make sure that we stick within the budget. So that was a big thing of mine is making sure that we stick within the budget. Okay. So it definitely get, it was a gateway to um, what music, my career in music was. So so or is. so seeing that, you know, it's obviously the, the distribution was different For sure. than what it is today. And also even the budgeting, because, right, like sure. you're talking about now there's a budget for content. Yes. It wasn't a thing back then. At all. So do you feel like being that you've been able to experience – these different times mm-hmm. or generations of the music. Yep. Do you feel like now you would prefer to be in the music industry as it is now or how it was then? I mean, I guess it's a mixture of both, right? Because now it just, I think it makes it to make it people too lazy because people are, you know, artists are able to up- upload their music faster, this is that, but they then they don't have to go on the streets. They can be like, yo, I just post a video and I had, let's say a thousand, because people, um, you know, they downplay what a thousand people look like. Yeah, yeah. So 100%. If, a, if you, so if you have a thousand people that follow you, and let's just say every one of them fo- like liked it, commented, that's a base, yeah. right? So nowadays though, that's that's essentially called work. Where when we drop something, we had to physically go out there or go pay the radio, go pay like go pay for ads, like physically go to the yeah. radio station. Or, you know, go on the street and go, hey, you know, can you check the CD out? And yeah. like, well, you were on it? Nah, I'm the president of the company. And the biggest thing about that is, is that when I used to say that to guys, 
He's like, I'm gonna listen to it just because you're the president. And you know what? I'm gonna buy five. Yeah. Because he's like, you're not even on this CD, but you're out here. Yeah, I'm peddling you're out here it. Peddling yeah. it and, and pushing it. Pushing it. So I was out there too. I wasn't on it. You know, I probably I was trying to be on some DJ Clue stuff. They put me on the CD a few times. But yeah. That wasn't my thing. I'm like, yo, bro, I know this business. I know I can get you guys to where we need to go. It's funny you say that. Um, my man Mario, shout out to my man Mario. Um, he owns a, a marketing company mm -hmm. and he put out a video like that where he was like, when people come to him for marketing and quote unquote content strategy mm -hmm. and they say, oh, but I only have 500 followers. Yep. And he's like, when was the last time you ever spoke in a room full of 500 people? I tell people that all the time. When was the last time you spoke directly to an audience of 500 people that was only listening to you? I, and, I and, tell people that all the time. Yeah, and and it, and it's it's crazy when you think of it like that because, you know, I think that that's a that's an untapped market as far as new artist or or today's artist or even to or anybody because you have the ac you have the accessibility of creating the content with your phone for sure so you just being out on the street with the people that's and, and interacting interacting with them, with them. <laughs> that that's why we went out a lot so we went out a lot like in to other virginia north carolina atlanta miami daytona like we were just up and down that you know that belt and Alabama, like, bro, I would, we'll go, we'll be in, in hoods that, you know, we New Yorkers. So as soon as we step out, we just look different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not even let alone what the plates, the license plates say on the car. Yeah. But we were driving all those cars into to these territories. Mm -hmm. And we were like in the hood. Yeah. And, you know, you know and um, it, the very, the, the thing about that was that people saw the genuineness of us. So even the people that were there that were really, really like killers that, you know, we find out later, yeah. yo, who you was with? Mm -hmm. And um, those individuals just reckon, it was like game recognized game. We just was able to have these conversations and then still selling our CDs. Mm. So, and that was the biggest thing that they, they had respected the hustle. Um, and that's the thing with me is that um, you give respect and you get respect, right? So the goal for me was, it didn't matter where we went. I w it doesn't matter who you was or where you was. I'll shake your hand, look you in the eye and let you know what's going on. And I'm not the most gangsterous and this, I wasn't trying to be none of that. Yeah. I was more trying to sell a product. So I just went into my pitch. Okay. And that's what taught me how to pitch. And that- and Getting in those environments. And it's crazy because you, you, you already mentioned like four different fundamental elements of running a business. Mm -hmm. And people don't see it that way. Like something as small as a pitch. I tell, I tell my coaching clients all the time, I'm like, so, if you got on an elevator tomorrow mm -hmm. with you, you got on an elevator that was going to the 200th floor mm -hmm. and you look to your left and it's Jeff Bezos and you look to your right and it's Elon Musk and they ask you, what do you do? Are you prepared yes. for that conversation? Or can you spit that out and say that confidently? Right. And most people can't. And it's so undervalued, right? They do. They, some, they even do what they do well. Yes. They can't do that. do that. Yeah, it's crazy about that. How do you think... What do you think is the blockage of like people having that, not having that? Um, I think that it starts with people not really having, especially if you're in a business that, in an entrepreneurial business that's not, quote unquote, sales. Got you. Right? Yeah. Even though everything is sales. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But if you're not doing like hand to hand transactions Got you. or, or, Having to sell a product specifically, Got you. yeah. I think people skip that, mm -hmm. so they're not thinking like, "Oh, I might have to pitch my company someday." It's like, why would I need to do that? I I bake cupcakes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> but not knowing that if you do pitch, it may it may yeah. elevate your business. It or matter if or you, you make a fucking dulce de leche cupcake yeah, that yeah, nobody yeah, else makes, yeah, and yeah. and that's your product. product yeah. But you don't even know how to properly. Um, market that and i feel like that's what happens a lot when i talk to entrepreneurs i'm yeah. like so are you doing this are you doing that and it's like they just want to get to the money like, Yo, how, how, how do i get to the, making more money <laughs> the crazy part about this is when, when my pitch is that we were pitching in areas that was like very rough so i had to be fast quick and being able to get what i needed to get out fast and also capture capture them when and then when i took the cd out they're like my, you know why that cd green like because for the money and you know, and they used to love that. So 
it, in return, they paid five or ten dollars for it. And once they played the songs or whatever, they were like, "Yo, this is this is a height." And for me, I was like, "Yo, it's a win because, you know, one can turn into a hundred thousand people." So yeah, it was definitely it was definitely a good process for me. Facts. So so you do that. Mm -hmm. What what's next after working in that? That record label or what yeah, was the so, next venture for you at that So point? at the time, it wasn't like we was making that much money. Right? Yeah. And um, I didn't want to, first I didn't want to blow through the cash that I got for the insurance. I was still kind of like doing some other stuff around, making some bread. And then I ended up getting a job, <laughs> right? Okay. Like to kind of like focus on, all right, I could save some money. It's so money. crazy. It's, talking about, it's so <laughs> crazy how entrepreneurs say that. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I had to get a job. Yeah, like, that's a fact, bro. Like, I had to get a like, job, yo, son. So crazy, I had to get a job, son. I was like, yo, I got to get this job. <laughs> I got to get this job. Yo, bro, I'm going to tell you, man. I went to get this We're going to punch a clock. Yo, my, I promise you, I was like, damn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was at uh, I was I was in the bathroom and, and you know the, you had your mirror in the bathroom I'm like am I really about to do this I had a, and I had my shirt and a tie on to go do my yeah. interview I'm like yo this is not what I wanted but you have to do things yeah, you in order to. to get there so I ended up applying for these two companies end up going to these two companies um, one of them you know both of them were um, to work with people with disabilities and um, one of them I worked there one night man and never went back. They still waiting for you to come. <laughs> still waiting because it was going to a, a school with kids. Yeah, but the way it was set up was like a psych ward. Okay, so I got in there already. Like, what the fuck going on here? Like, this is kind of crazy, mind you. I didn't even get the other job yet, but I had faith that I would get it. Mm -hmm. And um, I went <laughs> went to this job, man. The first night, bro, half my shift in. I was like, oh, it's lunchtime. I never came yep. back. <laughs> yeah. it, I was like, "Yep, not going back to this." It's funny you say that, man, because <laughs> because when I when I first got into real estate and it was and it was tough and I was struggling, um, I had a I had a very same aha moment of yeah. like, I got to get a job, got to get a job, and it, and it wasn't a job at first. I said I'm gonna do Uber. Uh huh. Yo, you know I'm a par you know I be paranoid. I I be, uh, listen, I did Uber for. Six hours <laughs> taking it is taking this dude to the airport. I'm like, my man, what you doing back there, bro? <laughs> I kept looking back. I was like, yo, 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 matter of fact, yeah. I pulled over. I said, yo, get out, bro. Yeah, you He's see? Like, what you mean? I said, yo, get out. <laughs> get out. Let's <laughs> well, see what I'm saying. So like with me, I yo, they were blowing my phone up. Uh, I was like, yo, bro, I'm not coming back. Yeah. She's like, Yo, we need you. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah. So then I end up working. Another company called me. Okay. And this company ended up having a, a program that just opened up. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really not. There was nothing um, set in stone. They were okay. going through like uh, staffing issues. So I, I got there, and um, I'm like, oh, you know, I could do this, but not forgetting what I really wanted. Yeah. Right. So in, the t in that time, I was like, yo. I think we should open a studio. Then I, I rallied up. At that time, I ended up opening, starting a new company. Um, and then that that record company was called Distant World Records. Okay. And um, so, because you know everybody knows Long Island for the train, so that mm. was the logo. The logo was like the train coming out the map. Okay. So um, so we created this company called Distant World, and had a few artists, and I built. We built a studio. And, and and started housing talent. Okay. So and then, then housing talent and doing like multitudes of like talent shows and just winning them. Mm. Like and prize, some prize, some not prize. And in in the meantime, doing that, still working though. I was working this 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 job, you know, as a at the it was called a uh, direct care counselor. Okay. D, a D well, direct support professional, sorry. Okay. DSP or or DCC direct care counselor. And I was doing that for a little bit, mm. and um, started getting good at it. Like you know, as far as because all this stuff was more so common sense. Yeah. But you know, people just don't have common sense, and um, ended up working with this company. They moved me from like DSP to senior counselor. Senior counselor is the is like the third position in the, in, in the house. Mm -hmm. So it's the manager, assistant supervisor, and then me. Yeah. And at the time, I was still able to get like overtime. So. I would just murder the overtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, 
I would probably do, you know, it's a 40 hour week or 40 hour bi weekly. Mm. I would probably do 40 hours in one week because mm. I was like, yo, I'm taking this money and I'm going to do this. Because, and then you also, life goal, ha you know, happens. I had a kid. So I was like, yo, I still I have a kid, but I still need to pursue my dream. And um, whatever that may look like. Yeah. So um, I was doing this and, you know, moving around, going, doing all these shows. Now selling my own CDs for my own company. Okay. Um, from the skill that I was taught prior. Prior. And then, and then what we ended up doing was at that time, you know, remember them towers for CDs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we bought two, and started actually before we did that. Yo, shout out DJ Four Five, man. DJ oh, Four Five. <laughs> yo, DJ Four Five. You know, if y'all don't know who he is, legendary DJ, DJ for for Biggie, Fab, the list goes on. He used to burn our CDs because he lived in Long Island. Oh, okay. He lived in like Central Islip. Like he was, that's where, you know what I'm saying? That's, so when I would tell people like, yo, I said, Long Island has a history with this music stuff yeah, for real. Yeah. So he burnt our CDs, but then I used to see the towers that he had. Man, I started going and doing research, found them, and then, you know, the money at the time, I think, them joints was going for like 1500 or something like that. Mm. Bro, I went, I went in the stash, I'm like, yo, I'm buying two. <laughs> Go to the store. The lady was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm buying these two. She's like, it's like three grand. I'm like, yeah, 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 come on. Let's go like yeah. this. Let's get it going. And we ended up started, you know, we ended up started burning our own CDs, mm. um, which was amazing. And then, you know, started selling our own CDs. Bro, it, it became a business, but it there was something still missing. Like, yeah. it was almost like, you know, you get over the hill, but you just won't get over yeah, the hill. Yeah. You'll get yeah. on the hill, you just won't get over the hill. It was just stuff still missing, man. And um, I was still working, bro. I was like, damn, this shit is still not adding up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still working. But I, I think I think that, you know, those are all interchangeable skills. For sure. And and people don't see it that way. You know, corporate the the, the corporate model is successful for a reason. For and sure. if you're able to look at it and see why, you know, and, and then translate that into your own company, then then you'll win. So mm -hmm. th there's definitely upside to being in the corporate space for sure but you work in you know the the job at, as as a counselor mm -hmm. senior counselor yeah you're doing a record label yeah then 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 what happens from there so for, so what ended up happening from there i end up moving up again in the company mm -hmm. so now you're getting domesticated even more right yeah so now your dream looks farther away from you because here they present you with an opportunity and you're like, I got a kid, I got a family, I got a Stabi family. Stability, stability will do that to you. Yeah, man. stability started started giving me this like, like wait, wait a minute, bro, this this is this is what I'm gonna do. I right, let me let me let me let me at least put my all into it, yeah. right? And I was like, let me try. So then I ended up becoming a, a a supervisor for a group home that they just opened up, and it was a forensic psych home. Okay. So and forensic psych just really means that. He's one, the, kind, the people that were in there, they went to jail or dealt with police mm -hmm. sometime in their tenure of being in the agencies. Okay. A lot of those kids came from, or a lot of those young adults, I should say, came from money. Yeah. So a lot of their parents had some bread, and they would they would donate money to the program so that they can buy homes. Okay. So, But this is probably one of the most expensive houses that they had for their program. So this house, I think... Did like two million at that time, like two million a, a year. No house ever did that that much money, um, because of the way it was set up. You had a psychiatrist or psychologist say on both shifts. Mm -hmm. It was like a one to one. So me, you, and then there's four residents. One person to each. So yeah, we yeah. ten. So we had that, and then from there, it was just, it was cool at the time. It was cool for what it was. The pay was all right. I was yeah. salary, so it didn't matter if I came in for eight hours or I came in yeah. for five minutes. You lost that overtime. <laughs> I definitely lost the you overtime. Lost that crazy. Overtime, so I know and so, that. which still then allowed me to then run the streets and do stupidity, but nevertheless, though, still having the business sense, still having the studio. Um, then we started renting, having studio time, and then started doing things for that. Um, but then after that, bro, it just you know. Stability, man. Yeah. They they came to me again and was like, "Yo, listen, you know, we want to give you another position." Okay. <laughs> yeah, they tangling the carrot. And mind you, this time, you know, I had no degree, mm. so you know, all the people around me, 
had degrees. And so they were making, let's just say, let's say that they said uh, they were making 40000 a year. Mm-hmm. I was making like thirty seven. Okay. So in my mind, I'm like, you ain't making as much more money than me. Yeah. I'm just, you know, you just have a degree just to say you have a degree. Yeah. But I was killing them when it came to like showing up for work yeah. and doing the job. I was able to do that. But they dangle it again. Yeah. And it was like, hey, we want to give you two programs. I was like, all right, cool. All right. Mind you, though. I'm on call for two programs. Yeah. So if I'm with my family and something happens, I got to pick this call up to deal with the problem. And sometimes, you know, you're dealing with humans, so things happen. Yeah, yeah. It's not a quick, oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. It's a stop my whole life. Yeah. Then from there, again, they dangle the carrot again. Mm-hmm. They dangle it again. I need to be a director now. Mind you, still, I don't have a degree. Everybody that's... The directors have degrees. Yeah. So I, you know, I just was like, you know what, I'll do it. Um, and then at that time, they came up with a mentoring program. And I really wanted to know what the business was like, especially if I'm, you know, putting a lot of my time into this non for profit sector. Mm-hmm. I was like, yo, let me see what's going on. And I went, I asked that the CEO was my, my mentor. Okay. Where everybody was like looking around for mentorship, I went directly to the top. And he gave me the time. Like he was so, like, yo, I'll 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 carve out time once a month for you to sit down and talk to me, and you know he gave me books to read, he, you know just some mindset stuff, and at that time I became um, a facilitator for Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Oh, Stephen okay, yeah, 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 that's dope. You, you see, I I feel like um, what happens a lot, right, especially mm-hmm. like in the black and brown community specifically, when we get into entrepreneurship, yeah, is you start putting down education, you start putting down the mm-hmm. degrees, degrees and, and all of that. And I've never been a fan of that because what I what I learned as I climbed the scale in, mm-hmm. in the corporate world was, yes, your work ethic mm-hmm. and, and um, your know-how and, and your experience in said industry mm-hmm. can get you to climb the ladder in the corporate world. But not having that degree yeah. will always give them the ability to underpay you. Always. Say, oh, you Donovan, you you great. Yeah. You, we'll glad. Yeah. yeah. You wanna be the director? Yeah. 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 And that's exactly but what they it's said. A, it's a $40,000 pay cut. That's exactly what they did. Yeah. They said, you're good, but you don't have a degree. And, you know, this this position paid 60, but we can only give you 52. Mm. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's that, I'm, I'm gonna take it for right now, but this ain't it. Yeah. And then I ended up saying, like, yo, listen, I just ended up, I, I was unhappy. Yeah. And um, ended up leaving, mind you, stability. Oh yeah, I know. And then I just took a chance on myself, man. And then um, ended up, you know, at one of these labels, man. And uh, that's where I guess people. They didn't know me just from being in a label because they knew me from running around. Because you know you you're one of them guys you're one of them guys that always running around for yeah. music. So um, when you're doing that, you start to meet people. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I left, I ended up, you know, I ended up, you know, you know, by the grace of God, I was able to land a position, you know. And from there, that's where it started. Like this Donovan, you know, artist, you know, music guy. Okay. And um, and, and that's like like A and R work. A and R work, yeah. Okay. So and then from there, it just it became a, it just became, a part of me. So when people, even to the point that people were calling me like Donovan the A and R, like mm-hmm. it, it was attached to my name, yeah. Um, which was cool at the time, but you know, I I just really at that time too, I was still trying to find myself and try to find myself within the music business because one, there's just it was a lot of just like, even for people that that are not artists, you can go work with somebody. And they're not who they say they are. And then you're a part of their circus. Mm. So essentially, you still had to kind of like um, break away from certain things and kind of move kind of militant before you started trying to be a part of anything. Yeah. And then especially when you're attached to like a company, everybody wants to be attached to you. Because mm-hmm. they want to be, you know, I'm attached with the guy from X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And those things were cool, but, you know, you'll make money here and there. But it just, you know, you're talking about, do you want money for the weekend or you just want money for the year? And that's that was a big thing is that they didn't people didn't see that. So I just started 
you know, seeing what was going on and started moving around within the business and doing a lot of sync stuff, a lot of sync. I worked at a lot of jingle houses. I was just going around just to find my way. Okay. Yeah. And and is that what eventually led you to like, you know, working independently or Yeah, so after that I just um I started seeing a shift with the social media while I was working. And I'm like, yo, this is something, this is gonna be big. Yeah. And um everybody told me I was crazy. Okay. I said, yo, this is gonna change the music business. I was telling people this. This is gonna change the music business and it's gonna change it fast and rapidly. Nobody believed. Mm. I ended up started working with an artist on on Vine. Mm. <laughs> right? When Vine first started, and he was making buku amounts of cash. And at that time, advertising companies were paying viners a lot of money. Yeah. I mind you, they were paying these viners, no lie, ten to ten thousand, ten to five five to ten thousand a week. Different companies though. So the viner may have four five companies that just paid him ten grand. Okay. Weekly. But he don't know that they're gonna have to claim in the taxes. Like they don't they don't give them no business. They just yeah. know they're like, yo, you gotta sign this. Oh, and you now have to do this 1099. Yeah. yeah. But the viner don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I started seeing what was going on. And it wasn't more so the money aspect. I just saw that technology was going to take presidents on a lot of things. Yeah. And I, I said, you know what? Let me get on this early. And when I did get on it early, people told me crazy, bro. They was like, yo, you're crazy. This is not going to happen. And now look. And is that where you met my, my man Julian Fulian? <laughs> oh, no. Nah, that's, not, that's not where I met Julian yet. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's not where I met Julian yet. Um. Before I met him, I was working with an artist called uh, Live Like Davis. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah I remember. Um, yeah, and yeah. actually, and I spoke, I took Live to Arsonist. Big <laughs> yo, yo, R, I'm telling you, R, <laughs> yo, every episode you get mentioned is the crazy six degrees of separation. Everybody I know knows R. Shout out to R, Heat Makers. That's my guy. You know what I'm Big saying? Bro. And he's my yachty. You know what I mean? Big bro. Going. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But. I have, I still have the pictures on my my Instagram of him and live in the old studio by Forty Second Street. Okay, so that's that's how I know because I know he moved, but I'm yeah, talking about yeah. the one that was in Forty Second Street. Yeah, he's big time now. He's yeah. diamond district. Diamond car. district. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so now, um, so we there, you know, getting involved and seeing what's going on, and um, after a while, man, you just start, you know, you start seeing what this business is going to be about. And at the time, Live was in a in a, in a little crew. Actually, the, um, Wolf Tyler, actually, she's from Long Island too, mm. and they were in this like whole little crew. So I didn't manage. We didn't manage her, but we were around the situation. Nothing crazy, but they had their own little wave. Okay, you know what I'm saying? And they they were real good kids, man. They're just you know trying to figure it out. Um, but I knew there was something bigger, mm-hmm. you know, especially when it came to this social media shit. So I was like, yo, there's got to be another way. And another and and something else to build out, and still trying to find my way, bro. But entrepreneurship started just that that wave of it. Like, yo, I need to now start managing, and um and and really set my company, and start moving like a manager. And that's exactly what I started doing. Dope. Yeah. Dope. So, so from that point, did you say, I'm gonna do management and be independent part-time while still at the label? Yeah, so at that time, um, a new regime came in, and when a new regime comes in, you know, they get rid of everybody. Yeah. Or everybody moves and goes someplace. So at the time, they didn't really get rid of me. They moved me to, like, another department. But at that time, it was really, I didn't really care for it. Um, And when I say that, I mean, I say it very loosely because it wasn't wasn't a bad thing, but I really saw bigger for myself, better for myself, controlling my own destiny. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, you know what? Let me figure this thing out. And, you know, I took another chance on myself. I was like, yo, I'm about to dip and use my connections that I do have and start making some waves. So I started working with some people, produ- you know, a company that just did producer stuff, you know, and still had access to the labels. So I'd be in Dev Jams with thousands of, like, uh, like uh, hard drives going to a and R's. like, yo, play this, play this, play mm-hmm. that. Placing music, yeah. Um, and at that time, it was uh, it, it seemed like all right, this was a good wave, but then it's like, yo, this 
there's still something bigger for me here. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, your soul is not settled. I still had a family. I, the best part about this is I was able to, to, um, to have some money and generate income where some of my counterparts didn't really. They didn't. They didn't. Yeah. So, and mind you, I, I'm coming from Long Island. So I'm jumping on the, on the train and I'm going. So and I'm talking about every day. Yeah. So they're like, Yo, how you're able to survive? I set up some things in my life that I'm able to make, I guess, residual income okay. while going through this process. So, yeah. So, so vending machines, all that. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want to miss that yeah. part. I know, I know you, I know you, you moving and shaking in a lot of different capacities of of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So, you get you get to that point and. Now management is kind of like the thing. The thing. Yeah. And you meet Julian. Before, so I'm, so the, how I met Julian was I started working with this girl from Canada. Okay. Right. <laughs> and he was trying to holler at her. <laughs> <laughs> but he was talking to me because oh, I, I used to run her Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but he never was disrespectful. He yeah, was always yeah, yeah. he's a he. he he was just trying to holler. You know Same how he is now. Yeah, yeah. He, said, he, said he wasn't disrespectful. He, he saw a pretty girl he liked. Yeah. He was talking to me. Yeah. And I wasn't really cra saying nothing crazy. I was like, yeah. But I met him. Actually, was, we I, we went to this thing called Playlist Live. And um, it's it was in the Marriott. It was the World Marriott Hotel in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And we were walking. I'm walking with her. And I see this guy. He's there with his mom. Mm. But... Because I was talking to this guy, I'm like, "Yo, oh, nah, <laughs> yo, that's Julian," and you know what I'm saying. And then they met, yeah. And then you know, developed a relationship. But then we developed a relationship too. His mother was, you know, super cool. And um, at that time, you know, we were just became, we just almost just became cool. It wasn't even like, "You want me to manage you?" It wasn't even that. It yeah. was he was doing his thing. His parents was, you know, his mother's heavily involved in um, social media. Shout out to Linda. And Linda. Um, and what ended up happening was, we grab we just developed a relationship. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we're close because we developed. It wasn't business right away. Yeah, yeah, it, it was, was it was organic. It was yeah. organic. It yeah. was more of like, you know, it was my friend. Yeah. And from there, uh, we started building a relationship, man. And after you know his first song, you know, went viral. Um, Whoa, you know, it was the Whoa Challenge. He did a song called Whoa, and it went. Viral because I'm not his wasn't the original, but his was one of them. Yeah, you got like Michelle Obama and all these people using it. And um, I got a phone call, <laughs> Donovan. The song's going viral. We don't know what to do. <laughs> what do we do, right? And um, bro, that was just just super interesting, right? Because here, here's a guy that went to school. Um, he went to FIT and um, got into a program that. Only a few people get in for film. He puts a song out, and then all of a sudden, it goes off. Mm. Mind you, he was telling his parents that he was not going back to school, and this just helped that. Yeah, yeah. Right, but they didn't know. I yeah. said so. What I told them was like, "Yo, listen, you should put another record out," because because the other record wasn't really his. It was a challenge. I was like, "Yo, you should put another record out." He had already had the song "Who Are You" made, and um, they put that together and. He put it out, man, and he put the video together. And at the time, the way he was shooting his videos, nobody was shooting the videos like that. Yeah, he was kind of like the pine, one of the pioneers of that. And that song went to the moon overnight, yo, bro. I get another phone call. <laughs> what do we do? What are we doing? What are we doing? This song's going viral. What are we doing? <laughs> and at the time, my business partner at the time was Mims. Okay. This is why I'm hot, Mims. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we were business partners, and um, he had created an app. Um, called uh, Recordgram. Okay. So I was also working with them, um, which it was it was a, a phone app and it was a it was a studio it was a studio in your hand, and he was the one that actually told me about Bitcoin and uh, and blockchain. I learned it from him first. Mm -hmm. No artist is talking about it, but Mims is talking about it. Yeah. I learned it from him. But at the time, you know, he was my partner. So <laughs> Julian, yo. You know, I'm talking to his mom. I, we don't know what to do. I'm like, yeah. yo, what's going to end up happening is labels are going to start reaching out. Yeah. And at the time, it wasn't a bunch of labels yet, but um, we end up meeting to go visit a label in New York together before he went to L.A. And uh, we met at the label. 
it was cool. We sat down with them and talked to them. And Julian, you know, he heard what was going on. And Mims, we sitting there. Mind you, we don't have nothing on paper yet saying we manage this guy. Yeah. But we just did it because we, I was cool with his mom. Yeah. And, you know, we wanted, they, they trusted us and trusted me, rather, to really push, you know, to help their son. And um, it was cool that he goes to L.A. And then after he goes to L.A., I don't know, man. Probably we probably had like sixteen labels after that. Mm. We went to Warner, Atlantic, this one, that. We was all over the place. Yeah. And then I became, you know, officially became his manager. Fire. It was. Fire. It was. It was interesting. That's dope. Man. Yeah, man. That's dope. So we were flying all over the place too, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was dope. Man. Shout out to Julian. Huh? So that that brings you to. Mm -hmm. How do you meet your partner today? Oh, okay. your, your today's yeah. partner, Mike. How okay. do y'all? How do y'all? Shout out to Mike. Mike, yo, yeah. Shout out to Mike, man. Um, so I was working with a company called uh, Practice Worldwide. Shout out to my man Ali D. I'm gonna tell you like this: anything that has to do with sync, mm -hmm. he's the guy. Bro. He's the king. Anything, okay? Yeah. Disney, Nickelodeon, movies, whatever. His team, he has a jingle house, and his team, they crank him out, bro. Yeah. Yeah. WWE, whatever it is, it's it's like that. So yeah. he get he I get a phone call from him and he's like, Hey, what's up? I'm like, what's up? And we've always been cool. And he's yeah. like, yo, what you doing? I'm like, I'm working, you know. He sees what's going on. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Okay, yo, man, I have a space in my office. I think it's your space. I need an A and R. Come up here. And Clearly, it wasn't, it wasn't like he was paying me to come up there. I went up there and had a conversation. We had this, a good convo. And I was like, all right, cool. I'll take the position. So I get there. We're just trying to learn the system, all that stuff. And as I'm there doing my thing, we just we just all there helping each other. Shout out to my, uh, my man, Serge. Serge is his right-hand beast when it comes to the sync stuff. Mm -hmm. And, bro, like, I... I was seeing his good morning, good morning videos. Ah. <laughs> right? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. At the time, <laughs> he's like, please be clean, be clear. That's when he had the, the, the outro, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So he had the outro. <laughs> right? So, um, but. Uh, the outro. Yeah, he wow. like, be clean, be safe. Be <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He had, he, had the, he had the outro. So um, what ended up happening was. We, we we shared a, a mutual friend, which was Hip Hop Mike. And um, I was like, yo, who's this guy? I tried to, you know, he's like, yo, he manages Chico Millenni. Yo, he's y'all just like each other. He hits him up too and he tells him the same thing. So I, at first I hit him in the DM and he dubs me. Wow. Yeah, you know, this you know, typical Mike fashion. Typical he, Mike. He dubs me. So I'm like, dang, like, it's almost like a, I was like a chick. I'm like, yeah. damn, did I slide in this man's DM trying to holler at him? Yeah. No, let's see if we could connect. So I guess he G checked me by who is this guy, yeah, yeah. and he started telling him, you know, what we doing, what I'm doing, and then he hit me up like, "Yo, bro," I said, "Yo, listen, I think we can help each other. Let's let's have a meeting." And he came to the meeting. He, he was literally, he said, he slid. He said, "Yo, going to be here like 30 to 40 minutes." He was there for three hours. Mm. He had a good conversation, bro, and we just talked about the business and what it is and what it's not. And where we want to go as a team, as like separate teams, and I was like, "Yo, oh, bro, listen, let's see if we can help each other. I think we can." And um, you know, he he could tell the story because he, you know, he he talks about taking a shower, thinking about me, yeah, boys, yeah, you know, yeah, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of yeah. crazy, but he gives me a call the next day and goes, "Yo, um, yo, how about we put together this coalition? The, the name of the company is this group." Stands for trust, honesty, integrity, success. You know he's real good with the acronyms. Yeah, yeah. he's so the he acronym heard, king. He's the acronym king. So he had the name already. I was like, yo, let's go. And um, we started running the next day and never stopped, bro. Never stopped. And never stopped. And here we are. And here we are now. That's dope, man. That's you dope. Know, in this, you know, in this, in this space that we curated, you know, with the vision of what this is, you know, as far as from a brown and black company that we want. We wanted to make it a safe haven, but also from an entrepreneur standpoint, show people that it can it can happen. And this happened during pandemic. Mm. So while we we're working during pandemic, people were like, "You guys are nuts! What the hell you mean you gonna? Yeah. What do you mean you're gonna um open a location? 
Uh, we're going to open one. The first one we looked at was 10,000 square feet. Yeah. John, <coughs> we had me. $20 in their bank account. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. $20. They told us the rent was 20 grand. We like, eh, whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We like, who cares? It doesn't matter. And so John, so Mike looks at me, John, is like, what do you think, D? I said, yeah, it's too big, but this shit is fire. Let's figure it out. $20, though. Mm -hmm. That's, the, that's the, the part of your entrepreneurial mind that tells you that no matter what, by any means necessary, yeah. it's going to happen. But then we end up finding this location, and here we are now. And, and I think that, you know, what you said, like, regarding um, having, the, having the dream and having the vision, mm -hmm. that's the hardest part. It's because everybody wants to know the how. The how. Everybody wants to know the how. Oh, like, nah, you don't need to know the how. You just yeah. got to know that that's what we're doing and just got to know the next step. Bro, and that's what, you know, you have helped us that as, as a collective. Yeah. So, you know, you know, you you have a a um a vision. Like, how we got here. Okay, now how do we get over there? Mm -hmm. You helping us with that. And, you know, bringing you a part of the team and being a partner in the team it cre is creating this different outlook on what over there looks like. You know what I'm saying? Like, w this grass is already watered on this side. And, and you're like, yo, fellas, we, this side is already doing its thing on its own. Yeah. It's a forest already. Mm -hmm. We need to go over there now. And you've given us, and you and having you a part of our, our infrastructure and what we're doing as a team, um, it's opening up our palette for other things. And, you know, we and we we're mosing on down the road. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, it's essential. You need that. You need you need to have number one people you can trust, but sure. uh, but people that have a, uh, an outer perspective. Because sure. when you're in it, you can't really see it. Yep. And you can't really see, you know, what what's missing, what's needed, what's working, what's not working. Mm -hmm. You need somebody to come in with a fresh pair of eyes. And I think that, you know, for for the most part. Um, we've gone through individually and as a company, we've yes. gone through a lot of ad adversity. For sure, that that people don't know, <laughs> and, and and most people would stop. Yeah, you know but, what I'm saying. And yeah. knowing that, and you know when you and knowing that, and when you see the people that you have around you, and you're like, man, you know this happened, that happened, and they didn't stop. It motivates you. Like I know it motivates me because it's like, wait a minute, you, you could. You could just be like, yo, I'm, I'm good, guys. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to just heal up and just be on my... And you're like, yo, second day in, you're like, yo, da -da -da -da, yo. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, I'm like, you know what? This is per this is the person I want on my team. You know what I'm saying? E even that day, you know, I get a text message from you. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's the type of individual I want to be around. Because you know the same. We're like, we not we going to be in the trenches together, and we're going to build it out together. So... For Mike and I, having a person like you being a part of this 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 new it's like there's no trio, you know. It, it's it's another like confidence boost because we can get to the we know now we can get to the next phase because we you know we had the missing link to to the puzzle. And you need that you need you need that because that's one that's one of the biggest drawbacks of yep. being an entrepreneur is that there's no sick days, none. There's no paid time off. There's no bereavement. There's no any of that, mm -mm. and you need to have the people around you that that you can depend and on and, and say, you know, when I'm down, you're up, yep. and vice versa. So I think that that that's huge. Um, what would you say, you know, with all with all of the different types of business ventures, mm -hmm. and you know, from clothing to music mm -hmm. to record label to now content creative space mm -hmm. was your, your your biggest challenge in in all of these different spaces um people like uh it working well with people like finding the right people mm -hmm. and and actually executing it um some people what i've learned is some people like how it sounds like it sounds good when you have this grand idea and um but most people won't keep that same energy going outside. Like us having this conversation here, we have this dope idea, and then as soon as you get to the door, you're like, all right. So it was like almost like putting my trust in people 
understanding that I can't trust their word. I have to trust their actions. Mm. And as an entrepreneur, that's all I have is my is my word and my balls. Like really, if I tell you I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. The difference is, is that most people don't don't operate like that. And they look at what's going on and just being a part of it is good enough. And I'm, you know, from from the standpoint of what I want in my life, I can't have good enough. So in in, in all sectors of my life and this business, it has been the, the people has been a lot of um finding the right people, I should say, to see the vision opposed to because you know, no man's island. You could do it, try to do it on your own all you want. You're gonna have to mm -hmm. have somebody. And um definitely I would I would just be like, you know what, I need to find my right people, my right tribe. Yeah. Just so we can be able to take over. And I think right in this moment in time, I think I got the right tribe. Dope. That's for sure. Yeah. You have times where you want to quit? I have times I want to quit every day. <laughs> <laughs> every day. You know why? Because um as an entrepreneur, you get to the ups and downs. Yo, <laughs> you fall on your own sword. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter how you operate. I don't care if it's at the highest level, the low, the middle level. I think we all go through that same feeling. Yeah. Um, I want to quit every day, man. Yeah. Um, especially when you have to put out fires and, um, and it's always a new fire to put out. And sometimes it's the same fire that we spoke about eight months ago. Yeah. But and then it you know, and then you know that fire gets lit again and now we have to put it out again. Um, you know, and it's it seems like that's a recurrent thing in just all entrepreneurs is um that. But the, the biggest thing is that um it's just a thought for a few seconds mm -hmm. and then I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm kidding you're kidding yourself, bro. You're almost there. Yeah. What are you talking about? And and, and you're reminding yourself remind of why myself. why you started for and sure and why you're here. All day. Yeah. Yeah, and You've put in all that work in already to come here, to get this far, to go, I'm done? Nah. You got you, you owe yourself so, so much more. You know what I'm saying? I owe, I owe myself so much more, and, you know, and, I, and, I, and I owe my wife, I think, all of it. I promised her that I would do something, and, you know, and, and I'm going to make sure that I keep that promise. So, you know, and that's where I'm at right now. So... Even if I wanted to stop, I couldn't. Like my yeah. body's kind of, and my brain is kind of like programmed. Yeah, it's, it's 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 do or die for me. It's not. It's it's it's, it's now or never, and it's gonna always gonna be now. Yeah. yeah, but but also you know knowing that um, you know, she's she's proud of you for in sure. in what you do outside of business. For sure, she's she's more proud of that. She's more proud of what you're doing as a dad. Yeah, you know, and that that's that's the most important part. Because that's the job that you can't stop. That's the Never. job that you can't quit. Yeah, I can't, and you know the crazy part about this is that sometimes it runs in concurrent, right? Because as a father, sometimes now I'm a single dad um, because my wife is deceased. But you know, you 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 look and you say to yourself, like, "Yo, can I really do this?" Because even that, sometimes you be like, "Yo, I just, I just, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do this." But I don't have the luxury to not want to do anything. Mm -hmm. I have to. Um, I have people that depending on me that didn't ask to be here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So um, when I look at it like that, like one of my kids asked to be here. Yeah. Um, so I owe it to them, and I, I'm my obligation to them, um, and myself, and the people that depend on me too, my team, um, to keep on going. That that's like the the perfect analogy for the for the quote. Um, pressure is a privilege for sure. Because in your, in your situation, you know, like, had you been in a corporate job or had you not had kids, for sure, you know, it's a lot easier to, 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 give up. to give up. You know what I'm saying? I've been there. Yeah. It's a lot easier to give up. You know, I had times when I, when I was in a corporate world where I knew I had disability benefits. I knew I had workers comp and all that. So mm -hmm. it was like, ah, well, you know, I'm going to tell my doctor I'm feeling this and I'm going to take a leave and... Mm -hmm. You know, just sit home oh. and sulk in my misery for a little while. And when you don't have that because you're in the in the pressure filled situation that you're in right now. For sure. It's a blessing. Yeah, I and, and you know, I, it's the crazy part about that is, is that I started looking at it like that. Um, it being a blessing. Uh it, it 
I, at first, I thought the pressure was too much. You know, um, there's this quote by this this new this artist that said, he said in the, in the song he said he asked God to pull him out, and God said the test ain't done yet. Mm. And I heard that, and I was like, oh snap, that's me. Like, it hurts so much. Yo, please, like, pull me out of it. Mm -hmm. And God was like, nah, the test ain't done yet. Don't you ever give up. Yeah. And that's, that's when when I heard that song and heard that quote, I was like, okay, I won't give up. It was like, you know, yeah, yeah. I asked God to pull me out, and he's like, the test ain't done yet, but don't you give up. So I'm not going to give up. Thanks. Word. And we not going to give up. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we not going to give up. You know what I'm saying? For you know? sure. For sure, man. Well, my, my brother, I appreciate you. Nah, for sure. Appreciate Thank you. you being here again. Yeah, yo, listen, appreciate man. It. We here, man. Yo, John, we we own the place. So yeah, yeah. we could be here. We could run again. it back. We could run it we back, run five, back times. five times. Yeah, it don't yeah. matter. This is this is this is our place. I, so I, I know Mike gonna wanna run it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you know, Mike gonna wanna be on it next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, it's all yeah. good. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's just I think, you know, I, and again, bro, I thank you. You know, um you you're definitely you know, a great addition to what we have as, 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 you know, as a, as a team. And you, you, you see, you saw the vision from a different bird's eye view before coming here. Yeah. So you saw it from, from the outside perspective and you came in with some idea, ideologies that we needed to adapt. And, um, it, it, it it's helped us grow uh, from a business standpoint and from a mental standpoint to get us to another phase of where we need to be. Um, from a, from a, from all from career entrepreneurs. So, but I definitely want you to understand, man. Like we really appreciate you, bro. And Likewise, you know, bro. And you 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 you're definitely um, valued over here. I, you know I, what I'm saying? I feel that, and, and it's definitely reciprocal, man. Yeah. Tell the people where to find you. What's yeah. your at? What's your name? What's your where you at? Yo, you? So you know, listen, man. I become a, a, a I guess a professional podcaster. So you know listen, I mean? man. You can follow me at. This group Inc. Cause you know I need to give you my personal. You are gonna see me on the this group Inc. page anyway. And yo, you know if you ever have a chance outside of listening to stay connected, you know listen to the Fox Pod, me and Mike. You know what I'm saying? For plug, you know shameless plug. Um, but definitely we have a lot of stuff coming out, man. And you know this group, this podcast network, this space. You know, mm. you know every time you start hearing this, 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 and you see that globe, you know it's us. You know we. We 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 we're all over. You know what I'm saying? People somebody said to me, You guys are moving like the mob. I'm like, yo, listen, we ain't the mob, but we mob like. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. We're heard. Listen, thank you guys for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe. subscribe. Yes. You already know how that goes. Yes, yes. I appreciate all six of you that are listening and <laughs> downloading and That's whatever y'all doing. And um Stay tuned. See what we're gonna do with this company, with this group, with this space, with this network. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Peace. I need a hundred hundreds for the clothes. Yeah. Money off the nose. We ain't even have to touch the money off the clothes. Yeah. This time around, I'm coming at the dose. Feel like volunteer firefighters running to the smoke. Heard what they said. This wasn't what they wrote.